you gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here and today I am going to be tier ranking the main characters of Chain of Gold for absolutely no good reason. So I came up with the idea to make this video and I have no justification for it but I'm going to be doing it anyway and I hope you guys stick around to watch. I created a tier list on the tier maker website and I'm going to be using that to rank the main characters of this gorgeous book. I'm going to be screen recording doing the rankings on my phone but for an 18 year old youtuber I actually suck at technology so if this doesn't work I will cry. As for spoilers for the book, I'm not sure like how into the plot of the book I'll be getting so I'll have a more accurate spoiler warning in the description of this video so you can read that before watching this video to be adequately forewarned for any spoilers that you may potentially be getting in the video. If you do want to use this list for any reason to rank the characters yourself, although I don't know why you would want to because this is so stupid, but if you do, please feel free to. All I ask is that you give me credit for making this list and if you want to go above and beyond I would really appreciate if maybe you also shared this video or boosted this video because that would be a nice thing to do and in line with giving credit I want to mention that the pictures I'm using for the characters were all done by Cassandra Jean who is an incredibly talented artist. She always does incredible artwork for all of Cassandra Clara's characters and that's how I discovered her artwork. I will link her Instagram and Tumblr in the description. Definitely check her out because she is so talented and of course I will link the link to this tier list if you by any chance want to use it for any reason but if you do just please give me credit and with that let's jump into ranking these idiot characters for fun! Yay! <laughs> First up, I am going to be ranking Grace Blackthorn because I want to get this bitch out of the way. I think Grace Blackthorn is the one character that everyone mutually agrees on in that we all hate her. She is just incredibly cold and manipulative and I think as more of her true colors show, I just grew to hate her more and more. Honestly, I don't feel any sympathy for her and maybe you're supposed to because of her situation, but I feel like her cruelty just outweighs any sympathy I could potentially have for her, so I hate her. And so, with that said, Grace Blackthorn is getting her first spot in the shit tier. And it's where she belongs. Next up, we have Charles Fairchild, who I also hate. When I said I wanted gay representation in literature, Charles Fairchild is not quite what I meant. I think the first time we meet Charles Fairchild is in Every Exquisite Thing, which is a short story in Ghosts of the Shadow Market, and then itself I basically decided I hated him. Chain of Gold did not change my opinion on him. Honestly, I cannot believe that he is Charlotte and Henry's son, because he is so selfish and uncaring about any other human in the world. All he cares about is political gain and growth and again I have no real sympathy for him either. He doesn't care about other people so why should I care about him? I'm sad he's gay because this is not what I wanted. I reject him. He too belongs in the shit tier. He and Grace can hang out there together because that's where they belong. Next up I'm going to be ranking Stare Stare and Stare Stare is one of the characters who I am the most conflicted on. I think he's like one of those characters that you're supposed to originally hate but then you're kind of supposed to change your opinion on because he's supposed to kind of do some redeeming things and you're supposed to realize that he's a better person than you originally thought he was. But some of the things he originally did were just so horrible that I don't know if they are forgivable. The one I'm thinking about is what he did in Cast Long Shadows to Matthew, which is another short story in Ghosts of the Shadow Market, where Stare Stare told Matthew that Charlotte and Gideon had an affair and Matthew was a product of said affair, which is what then led to Matthew's 
essential downfall. Because of that, I just am so conflicted on him. But he also does have a lot of redeeming qualities and he's also gay and that's also a redeeming quality in my eyes. I mean, aside from that, I feel like he also does have some other redeeming qualities that he tries to do better. But he also did some really shitty things when he was younger and I'm just very conflicted. So I'm kind of conflicted on whether I want to put him in the bad tier or in the okay tier. I feel like maybe he needs to do some more work to make it to the okay tier. Maybe he needs to do more work to make amends and to be a better person. So I guess for now, I'll put him in the bad tier and maybe he can climb his way up if he does some more work. Yeah, let's do that for Stare Stare. Now we're gonna discuss Arion Bridgestock, who actually isn't a major character on Chain of Gold, but I still do believe she's an important character, so I'm putting her on the list because I like her. This is my video, so I can do what I want. Arion is another character I was a little conflicted about, especially because she doesn't have as much of a primary role in Chain of Gold. You mostly get to know her in Every Exquisite Thing in Ghosts of the Shadow Market, which is the short story she has a really big role in, but she does kind of have a part in Chain of Gold and she is discussed a lot in it and I feel like her situation is very understandable and I just feel like she is a character that you can sympathize with. I don't feel like she's a character that is bad in any way or is wishing malintent upon anyone else. I just feel like she's trying to do the best with the situation she's in. And though that is hurting who is one of my favorite characters, she's not doing it to intentionally hurt that person. She's doing it because of the time period and the situation she's in. So it's different than some of the other characters that were kind of more intentionally cruel or carelessly cruel she's kind of more doing it because of a position where she's stuck because of that i'm gonna put her in the good tier because i don't think you know enough about her to kind of put her in like a great tier or an elite tier but i also don't think she's cruel enough to put her in like the bad tier and i also don't want to put her in the okay tier because i do really like her and also she's gay so that's powerful so i'm gonna put her in the good tier and also she's Indian, so you know what? She has a lot going for her, so I'm just gonna put her in the good tier because it's what she deserves. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna start discussing the Merry Thieves, and I'm really excited because now we're getting into the, some of the fun characters and the real main cast of the book. First up, we have Tomathan Lightwood, who I really love. Tomathan is a really good boy, and I really love him so much. You know, his main quality that's discussed throughout Chain of Gold is the fact that he is so kind and that's very true, it's obvious throughout the book. And of all the Merry Thieves, he's the only one who really has a brain cell. The others are all kind of idiots, so he does also have that going for him. I think he's just really pure and really good and I kind of wish we'd gotten to see more of him, but this book does have a really big cast of characters, so I understand why we didn't. But the scenes he was in, I just thought that he was a very good and just a very nice addition to the scenes. He just also had some really great lines and I wasn't really expecting that. He was really good at dry humor and that was also very powerful and I love that for him. So I think I'm gonna put him in the great tier because he is pretty damn great and I'd love to see more of him in the next two books. Also, I'd love to see more about him in the questioning his sexuality journey as well and how that goes. I also just really love his moral convictions as well and he's just such a good boy and I wish the best for him and he deserves better and he's a very good boy. So yeah, he's gonna go in the great tier. It's what he deserves. Now I have Lucy Herondale, who I also really love. She is peak hair and deal energy and I absolutely adore that about her. She runs headfirst into danger without thinking twice and it is incredible. Also she has a such gay energy and I know she's straight but she's writing a book called The Beautiful Cordelia for someone named Cordelia and you can't tell me that's not the gayest thing you've ever heard. I just love that she is so hair and deal in how she runs headfirst into danger. It's the best thing in the entire world. And I forgot how much I loved the dumbass Herondale energy. I love seeing it from a girl because I feel like we've gotten so many Herondale guys. Like we have Will and Jace and Kit and 
James now, but we don't have it from a girl and now we get it from Lucy and it's what we deserve. She's just so strong-willed and I love that. She was another one I was a little bit conflicted about because I wasn't sure whether I wanted to put her in the great tier or in the elite tier, but then I just started thinking about how much I loved her dumbass energy and... I think I'm gonna put her in the elite tier because she is so powerful and she has so much room to grow as well, like so much room for potential growth and she cares about her family and friends so much as well. So though she does have some pretty strong dumbass energy, she also has so much care and compassion for the people around her which is just also really great and that's also a very Herondale trait. She's just very big Herondale energy. So Lucy is gonna get in the elite tier. She's gonna be the first one in the elite tier. Now I have Jessie Blackthorne who I also love. I wasn't expecting to love Jessie Blackthorne as much as I do. I am absolutely and utterly in love with his character and I would give up the world for him. He is so good and he deserves so much better than his horrible mom and sister. Honestly, if I talk about him for too long, I will start crying. So what I have to say is that Jesse Blackthorne deserves the world, but the world doesn't deserve him. He is just the best boy, the only boy, and I would do anything for him. He also belongs in the elite tier. I love him so fucking much. He's so good. Next up, I have Kristoff Lightwood, who I love so, so much. He's like a baby Henry Branwell, and he is the best. Like Henry, he's so smart, but also so dumb at the same time. And I love that about him. And he is just so pure and so good. I feel like I could use the same line that I used about Jesse about him in that Christopher Lightwood deserves the entire world but the world doesn't deserve him. He's just so sweet and innocent and I just want to protect him from everything bad that ever happens. He also belongs in the elite tier because he's a good boy. Now I have James Herondale who is really going through it. My son is having a very hard time and he could actually be my son because I'm finally at the age where I'm older than some of these characters and that's stressing me out. I wasn't expecting to love this idiot as much as I do. Like his sister, James has peak Herondale energy as well and I love that for him. He's having a rough time, Jame is, and I kind of simultaneously want to give him a big hug and also slap him in the face. I kind of think both of them are what he needs. I mean, I know I'm gonna put him in the elite tier, but I'm kind of just thinking about how much I love him right now and how much I wish I could give him better because he deserves better and he's really just going through such a rough time and he's been going through such a rough time and he's probably gonna keep going through such a rough time and it's not what he deserves. But at least he's gonna be in an elite tier. Next up, I have Matthew Fairchild, who like his Parabatai is going through a really rough time. I love Matthew Fairchild. He screams bisexual rights and is also going through a very hard time in his life. He is a very good boy who's having a very hard time, so he's doing some not so good things because of the hard time he's having. I think I said this in like one of my last videos because one of my friends said this, so I quoted her. Matthew Fairchild is the first non-Herondale to have such Herondale energy because all the Herondales seem to go through such hard times and then end up so damaged and Matthew has ended up in this position as well. I also kind of simultaneously want to give him a hug and slap him as well. I love Matthew so much. He quickly became one of my favorites in this book, if not my favorite. He is just such an incredibly complex character and well-developed character, and I can't wait to see more development of his character, even in Cast Long Shadows, which is the short story he was the primary character of in Ghosts of the Shadow Market, his character complexity was so well done and in Chain of Gold it was even more well done. I feel that that is just going to continue throughout this trilogy, but I'm just so stressed about how hard of a time he's having. He's the first character who's gonna go in the god tier because he's that level of greatness. And now I have Cordelia Carstairs who is absolutely incredible. She is a fucking badass. Cordelia Carstairs is like 
I think the only character we knew absolutely nothing about going into Train of Gold, which is interesting because she was the main character and I think that's why Cassie did it this way. And she's basically become unanimously loved by everyone reading the book. She is incredible. She is my favorite main character of all of the different series in the Shadowhunter worlds. I love her so fucking much. She is one of those characters who's simultaneously so badass and so soft at the same time and that is what I love in a character. And she's also a really powerful woman of color in the early 1900s and I love her and I so loved how Persian culture was explored in this book which is kind of off topic but I just really need to mention that because I thought it was just gonna be like oh she's a Persian main character but it was not gonna be something that was delved into but it was actually something that was really really delved into and I was so so happy about that. I just love Cordelia Carstairs a lot and I wish her the best and she's also gonna be in God tier because I love her so fucking much and she is by far my favorite of all of the main characters in the Shadowhunter world and I love her and she's very important to me. And now I have Anna Lightwood who is also gonna be God tier. I don't think that should be a surprise to anyone. I love Anna Lightwood. She is the world to me. She is truly my deity, which is why she's going in the god tier. Anna Lightwood is truly so powerful. She just does not give a fuck what anyone thinks. I mean, she's a genderqueer lesbian who's out and proud in the early 1900s, and she's just having sex with women left and right and then throwing them aside. I love how much she cares for her family though, because even though it kind of seems like she's cold and uncaring to the people she does sleep with at times. She actually cares about the people in her life the way she cares about the Mary Thieves and Lucy and even Cordelia eventually is so wonderful and she's just so powerful and caring at the same time. She's so confident in herself and I just love her a lot and she's my deity and I would give up the whole entire world for her if she asked me to. And now finally, I have one last tier left and that tier is the Oscar tier. Oscar is Matthew's dog and he is by far the most important character in Chain of Gold. Not only does Oscar save Matthew's life and then refuse to leave the scene after doing so, but he is also the brightest spot throughout the book. I love him so much and I would also pay for him to be the only character in the next two books. If Chain of Iron was just a book from Oscar's perspective, that would be fine. I would still pay to read it. He is so important and I hope we get to see more of him. I hope he gets to go on the adventures with the characters and I hope he has a really good day. I hope he eats a lot of treats. I hope he gets a lot of pets and I hope he gets to go on a good walk. And with that, I have completed my tier rankings for the main characters of Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This was probably the most meaningless video I have ever filmed, but I hope you all enjoyed it nonetheless if you decided to watch it anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you all are taking care of yourselves in this very chaotic time. I know it can be a very stressful time and I hope if you did choose to stick around and watch this video, it provided you a few minutes of escapism. I have a couple more Chain of Gold videos coming out soon, including my Chain of Gold review. Yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you all did enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe because that stuff makes me happy. Go ahead and comment down below. Let me know if you agree with my rankings. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know your thoughts on Oscar the dog. And as usual, all of my social media and my Goodreads will be linked in the description below if you'd like to follow me anywhere else. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day night wherever you are. Please remember that you are beautiful and you deserve the world and I will see you soon for a brand new video. Goodbye!